Revelation Chapter 2 In your authorized version of the scriptures Please get your authorized version of the scriptures And please follow me along As we go through this Revelation chapter 2 Verses 8 on to verse 10 and unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works, and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Because, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Those who say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Um, Anti-Semitic, hateful racists out there who hate the uh, Hebrew people, like to come to this verse and try to pin everything that Roman Catholicism is doing upon the Jews. Okay? And they will pick that, well, it says the synagogue of Satan, so it's, it's the Jews, and they say they are Jews and are not. The Jew, the Hebrew, is the apple of God's eye. We, the Gentile, have been grafted into their tree to make them jealous. So when you have someone uh, teaching replacement theology, such as Stephen Anderson, Roman Catholicism, of course, who Stephen Anderson works for, the black Hebrew Israelites, they're distorting what a Jew is and ultimately seek to replace the true Jews who are Hebrews. And we're going to look at that today scripturally. Scripturally! What is a Jew? The thumbnail is going to get your attention, obviously. But we're, we're going to look at this today. Uh, a little in-depth for a lot of you uh, devils out there who hate the Hebrew people, who hate the Jews, and try to replace them and confuse and distort what a Jew is. We're going to see through the scriptures what is a Jew. Now, while we're in Revelation, go to Revelation chapter 3. And we will be reading verses 7 on to verse 10. Revelation 3, verses 7 on to verse 10. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David. He that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Again, verse 9. Those who say they are Jews and are not, and are of the synagogue of Satan. Okay? Roman Catholicism. Unto them... What they tell you, there is no salvation outside the church, meaning their church buildings, okay? And since Roman Catholicism is a counterfeit of, number one, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and number two, of the true faith, the church of the living God, they call themselves Christians, okay? They are a counterfeit. They are anti-Christ meaning they are against Christ, but they seek to replace him with their own devices and their own means. So when it says here, synagogue of Satan, 
in within the scriptures, you're not going to find anything about a church building. Okay? So what buildings you're going to read about are synagogues and the temple. Okay? All right, man, you can argue the house of God. But, you you know, being of someone's house means that you are in relation onto them. Okay? But you are not going to find anything within the scriptures about a church building. But you will hear about synagogues and, of course, the temple of the Lord. You know, the actual physical temple that Solomon built, the, re, the second rebuilt temple, and eventually the third rebuilt temple. Okay? But see, those who want to replace the Jew, the Hebrew, okay, the true Hebrews, they call themselves, you know, we are the new Israel. Stephen Anderson, he teaches that the church, the Christians have replaced the Jew. That's exactly what Roman Catholicism teaches. Hence, he's working for Catholicism. Okay? And then there are these um, devil idiots out there from England who they themselves uh, think they are Hebrews. You know, the British Israelites, that's what the one in the middle of the thumbnail is addressing. It's thinking that those of Shem, are uh, those that are of Japheth, have replaced Shem, the Hebrew, <laughs> okay? And then, of course, you have those of Ham. Ham, which are descended from those of Africa, okay? The Hamites, calling themselves the true Hebrew Israelites. We're going to wade through a lot of this today. So, get, like I told you, get the authorized version of the scriptures, and please follow me along going to, Lord willing, demonstrate to you and prove to you according to the scriptures, not according to the teachings and traditions of men, but according to the scriptures. What is a Jew? I've done a video similar to this, um, Who Are the True Jews? Um, this one is going to, Lord willing, eclipse the previous one. Though I'm not going to delete that one. You can find that on the channel here if you're curious. But um, this one, uh, like I said, Lord willing, is going to eclipse that. First, before we get into this, turn to Genesis, the beginning, chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9. We will be reading verses 8 on to verse 19. Uh, a lot of you replacement theology devils, you Catholic coadjutors and Jesuits, and you deluded devil-possessed people, okay? There's going to be a lot of scripture in this video. And unfortunately, a lot of you devils can't handle that. But those of you who can, like I said, Lord willing, we are going to show you through the scriptures what a Jew, according to the scriptures, is. But we have to go through a process before we get there, okay? Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 on to verse 19. Follow me along. And God spake unto Noah. Noah, that means comfort. And to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of fowl of the fowl of the cattle and of every beast of the earth with you for all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth and i will establish my covenant with you they were the only survivors okay the uh modern jews of today in israel the hasidim uh, there are branches of that who want to establish these wicked noahide laws that you will not find in scripture based off the Talmud. Okay, if I can remember, I'll find a link to, uh, to link in the description box, or else one will be provided in the comment section. But let's continue. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. God, God makes a promise there. He's not going to do like he did with the great flood, obviously. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, 
and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. You know, we call them rainbows, okay? Which comes at certain times after rain, but also, uh, like it says, and certain uh, cloud atmosphere kind of things, okay? It's talking about a rainbow. Let's continue. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. Okay, that's the covenant that he established with Noah. Okay? So, let's continue. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And what is that covenant? That he won't destroy the earth with a flood, like he did heretofore. Okay? And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is, in, that is upon the earth. Verse 18 and 19. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah. And of them was the whole earth overspread. Shem, Ham, Japheth. Shem, the Asiatics, which include the Hebrew, the Chinese, Japanese, that kind of stuff. Ham, descended of Africa, the African continent. Egyptians, stuff like that, okay? Japheth, us who are descended of Europe, okay? From these three, the sons of Noah, verse 19, don't look at me, look at the scriptures. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. Shem, the Asiatics, Ham, African, Japheth, European. And from those, the whole earth was overspread, there it is in scripture for you, okay? Now, while in Genesis 9, let's read verses 25 on to verse 27. Now, I have made a video also as well, Ham's real sin, okay? Um, dear friends, Ham's sin was not sexual in any way, shape, or form. That is a perverted, disgusting, heretical lie. Okay? If I remember, I will put the uh, video in the description box for you. Okay? But this is after Ham's sin. Okay? Verse 25 on to verse 27. And this is Noah speaking. And he said, Cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said... Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Shem, Asiatics, which include the Hebrew. Canaan, Ham, which include the African. Verse 27. God shall enlarge Japheth, Europe, and he shall dwell in the tents of of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And there are those uh, Jesuit uh, provincials from England who will say, This is only for these exact people here. No, no, you wicked provincial, you. Okay? Um, no, this is a covenant promise. This tells us, verse 27, that it's Shem's tent, the tent of Shem. God will enlarge Japheth, the European, okay? 
And it says here, Canaan shall be his servant. In verse 26. And it says again, in verse 27, And Canaan shall be his servant. Okay? Deal with the scripture. That's not being racist at all. That is what the scripture tells us. But why are we looking at this? Now go to Genesis chapter 14. Now, on your own time, go ahead and read Genesis chapter 10. And you will see the beginnings of the lines of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Okay? You will see the genealogies. Who is descended from Shem? Who is descended from Shem? From Shem? Abram. Who is Abram? He would become Abraham. Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. Okay? Genesis chapter 14. One verse. Verse 13. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew. This is the first appearance of the word Hebrew. What does Hebrew mean? Well, you can derive what Hebrew means uh, from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shew thee. And I will make thee make of thee a great nation, and will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abram was said to get out, to pass through the land. He was a soul, sojourner in other people's lands. So you can derive a meaning of the word Hebrew as someone who passes over, who is a sojourner. Of some sorts, okay? But what's significant is Abram is of Shem. Okay, are you with me? Shem, Hebrew. Abram, Shem, Hebrew. Do you get it? Okay? So those who are Hebrew derive from who? Shem. Okay? You do a little of your own labor there, dear buddy. Um, Abram is descended from Shem. And as we have read in Genesis chapter 9, it's referred to the tents of Shem. It's Shem's tent. Okay? So Abram, or excuse me, Abram is uh, first mentioned, the Hebrew. The first person in scripture to be called a Hebrew was Abram, who is descended of Shem. Okay? Are you with me so far? You of Canaan, you of Japheth. Hi, I'm of Japheth. You and I, Ham and Japheth, we are not of Shem. Scripturally, we cannot be Hebrews. Okay? And, of course, Hebrew, singular, Hebrews, plural, okay? So, one of Ham cannot be a Hebrew. One of Japheth cannot be a Hebrew. Why? Because scripturally, the first appearance of Hebrew is linked unto who? Abram. Abram is of who? Shem. Are you with me? Okay? Now go to Genesis 21.12. There is a wicked band out there that I used to like as a lost man. Their band, the band's name was Rush. A bunch of Canadians. They had an album, a disgusting album with a pentagram and some pornographic naked dude on there or whatever. And they had that album called 21.12. There's no significance. I mean, there is uh, no insignificance to that. Why is that? Genesis chapter 21, verse 12. Genesis chapter 21, verse 12. Now, this is after 
the Lord had said that he was going to bring um, Abraham a, a child, okay? But his, that uh, offspring was going to come of Sarah. But what Abraham did was the Lord said, of your own seed will I make, um, you know, is going to inherit all your stuff. So Abraham, Abraham, instead of waiting on the Lord, hearkened unto his wife Sarah, sound interesting from the uh, Garden of Eden, and he went in unto an Egyptian, a Hamite, and came from that union, Ishmael. And when you do the research in Scripture, it is of Ishmael, the union of Shem and Ham, Abraham and Hagar, where comes the sons of Ishmael, the modern Muslims. Okay? Okay? But, see, Abraham and Sarah, in their own power, tried to bring about God's promise. But see, it was not in Ishmael. Genesis chapter 21, verse 12. And God said unto Abraham, let, not, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, meaning Ish, uh, Ishmael, and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac thy, shall thy seed be called. Remember this whenever you get the opportunity to speak with a son of Ishmael, a Muslim. They need to hear the gospel. But you got to remember, Ishmael was the firstborn of Abraham. And that is what the Muslim clings to. But, look at that verse. Don't look at me. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. God chose Isaac. Not Sarah and Abraham's own efforts to produce Ishmael, which God did not bless. He blessed Ishmael. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he has. But it is an Isaac. Isaac. Purely of Shem. Not a half-breed of Ham and Shem. It's in Shem's tent. Okay? So, so, and, and there are those out there who are like, well, what about Ruth and all that kind of stuff? <laughs> You're missing the point. Okay? Abram, Abraham, a Hebrew. Who are the Hebrews? Of Shem, the Asiatics. Not Ham, not Japheth. Okay? Now, go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. The book of Hebrews, as the name of the book, the title of the book itself denotes, is written unto whom? The Hebrews. For when? During the time of Jacob's trouble. This is in the collection of the books of the New Testament. But this is specifically written on to another dispensation. Ah, uh, the time of Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? Israel. Well, we're going to touch on that. Don't you worry. But, just like James, you read the very first book, uh, the very first chapter in James, the very first verse. Who is it written on to? Huh? <laughs> James chapter 1 verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting the twelve tribes of Israel, the Hebrews, the Jews, who are of Shem. Okay? So, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 under verse 19. Okay? Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 under verse 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. There, right there, verse 8 is also a very good definition of the word Hebrew. Okay? And he went out not knowing whither he went. 
By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles, with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Isaac, Jacob, Hebrews, of whom? Abraham. Abraham was of whom? Shem. Okay, you with me? Don't, oh, don't you, don't you worry. Don't you worry about the word Jew. Don't you worry. You're going to be, Lord willing, bombarded with it. Okay, so let's continue. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God, not things that we make with our own hands. Okay? Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Okay? For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Again, very good definition of what a Hebrew is. Okay? And remember, Hebrew is attributed unto whom? Abram. And Abram became who? Abraham. Denoting a change? Something new? Ah, you don't say, huh? Yeah. Okay? Verse 15. And truly... If they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned, to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, and heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Verse 18, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So in Isaac, this is also uh, said again in uh, Romans chapter 9, but we're going to be reading Romans chapter 9 a little later, so we'll get to that. But the significance here is, Isaac, in Isaac your seed will be called um, before the law, okay? Of course, that holds true uh, during the law. In this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, in the book of Romans, in Isaac your seed shall be called. And in the book of Hebrews, during the time of Jacob's trouble, which is for the time of Jacob's trouble, another dispensation, it reiterates that in Isaac your seed shall be called. What does this mean? Someone who is a Hebrew is a direct descendant unto whom? Abraham. Abram. And Abram is a descendant of who? Shem. And whose tent is it that, uh, and whose tent is it? Hmm? It's Shem's tent. Remember, God will enlarge Japheth, and Canaan shall be your servant. Okay? A lot of people over history have twisted that about uh, Canaan, the Hamites, and have done much evil to those uh, of Ham, which Scripture does not condone. But, the fact is, Shem, it's Shem's tent. Shem came Abram, who became Abraham. And of Abraham became the, uh, uh, came the patriarchs. Isaac, in whose seed he, he shall be called. And Jacob, who begat the twelve tribes of Israel. So, a Hebrew is one who is descended of Shem, directly linked onto Abraham. Okay? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? That, and see, in Isaac, 
thy seed shall be called. See, that excludes the Chinese, the Japanese, and such the like. Because one would like to say, well, then you mean anyone from I, um, Shem. It could be as a Hebrew. No. It's in Isaac your seed is. His seed will be called. Isaac. Okay? The Hebrew is linked intrinsically onto the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob. Okay? So, a Hebrew is of Israel. Okay? Are you with me so far? That's as simple as it can be made unto you. But now, okay? Now, a true Hebrew is a descendant of Shem. Okay? And that descendant of Shem goes through the line of Abraham, Isaac, and who see he, he, uh, you are called, and Jacob. Jacob, whom I have loved, and Esau, I have hated. Okay? It's Jacob, who is Israel. Now, what about the word Jew? Now, we are going to be concentrating on the singular word Jew. Okay? Which in the scriptures appears 32 times. Okay? 10 times in the Old Testament. 22 times in the New Testament. The word Jews, which is what? Plural. Appears 243 times. And Jews with a little hyphen on the end there appears 14 times. We are not going to be looking at references onto the plurality Jews. Jew, singular. Jews, plural. Bloop, okay? We're not going to do that. Okay? But there are also variations of Jew. And these we are going to look at straight away. For example, Jewess. What is a Jewess? Go to Acts. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Acts chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Then came he to Derbe, Derbe and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed, but his father was a Greek. So, Jewess, a Jew, scripturally, what is a Jew? A Hebrew. Okay? So, a Jewess, a woman who uh, is a Jew, a Hebrew. Okay? Are you with me? And of course, but his father was a Greek. Okay? So, Timothy's mother was what? A Jewess. Hebrew. Okay? Verse 2. Which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Okay? And the second appearance of the word Jewish is in Acts chapter 24, verse 24. Okay? Acts 24, 24. Ah, uh, let's see. We'll just read verse 24. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. So, Jewess, that denotes what? A Hebrew. Okay? A woman. A female. Hebrew. A Jewess who did what? Was mindful of the law. Okay? Now, Jewry. Okay, and brother, <laughs> uh, I, 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 know your, uh, I know your sweet uh, humor and sarcasm. I, I feel you. <laughs> Go to the book of Daniel. Jewry. Jewry. Encompassing who? Jews. Okay? Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. Verse 13. 
Okay? Daniel chapter 5, verse 13. We're going to look at all three references of Jewry. Okay? Then, uh, Daniel 5, verse 13. Then was Daniel brought in before the king. And the king spake and, and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry? Jewry, the land the uh, pertaining unto the Jew. Okay? Okay? Again, Jewry, Hebrew, land. Get it? Okay? This was the first reference of Jewry. Second, Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23, if my fingers will get there. Verse 5. I'm going to read just this one verse. Uh, let's read verse 4 and 5. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. All Jewry. Jewry. Hebrew. Land. Jews. Okay? Okay. Okay, you, you get it? And one more stop. John chapter 7, verse 1. John chapter 7, <laughs> verse 1. Okay, just one verse. Just one verse. That's all that's needed. Now uh, let's read verses 1 and 2. Okay. John chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. For he would not walk, not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feasts, feast of tabernacles was at hand. There you get. There again, you see Jewries, openly amongst who? Hebrews. In what? Jewry, the land. And Jews, Hebrews. Okay. So. Now, let's get to some certain things. Let's go now to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Verses 25 on to verse 29. What is a Jew? We're going to look at the first mention of Jew, yes, but not yet. Not yet. Go with me here. Okay? Okay. Romans chapter 2, verses 25 on to verse 29. For circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision doth transgress the law? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is of which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Okay? What does this mean? Circumcision was a sign unto the Jews, the Hebrews, about the covenant. Okay? All right? But see, the Jews of this time, especially when our Lord walked on the earth, okay? The Jews of that time kept the law only in pretense, not with their whole heart, see. And uh, Paul is making the comparison here about, about that, uh, that those under the law 
kept the law with their hearts. See, because the law was faith and works. Okay? See, under the law, you had to have faith that God was going to honor your works. You had faith in what God was going to do. While as today in this dispensation, we have faith on what God has already done. That is the difference, see. Okay? All right? So, and this also flies into the face of those today who want to say to you, you have to become a Jew and keep the law in order to be right with God in order to be saved. No, this is a new dispensation. Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. He didn't do away with it. He fulfilled the law because the law was added. Why? Because of transgression. Okay? To make man aware that he cannot be right with God in anything that he did. It took God in flesh to fulfill the law perfectly, which Jesus Christ did. See, this is a different dispensation. We do not need to keep the law today to be saved or stay saved. Unto the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Okay? Are you with me? Okay? Now look at Romans chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Right here. Right here. Romans 3, verses 1 and 2. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Again, Abraham. Circumcision was given unto Abraham. Abraham is of what? Shem. Abraham, or Abram, was first called a Jew, uh, was called what? A Hebrew. And Abram became Abraham. A Hebrew. And the Hebrew are descended of who? Shem. Okay? You with me? Verse 2. Much every way. Pay attention. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Oracles of God. The law. Okay, so the Old Testament law was committed unto who? The Jew. Who is the Jew? Scripturally. A Hebrew. Because circumcision was given unto who? Abraham. Abraham who was Abram. And Abram was, uh, was in Scripture. First called what? Was the first known Hebrew. And Abram is descended from whom? Shem. So those who are of Japheth or Ham cannot be a Hebrew. But see, the devil today is doing a real good job at distorting a lot of you deluded devils out there and those of you who hate the Jew, the true Jew, um, the devil is busy distorting what a Jew is. Why? Because his church, Roman Catholicism, is replacement theology. He wants to be like God and his church to replace the church of the living God. See? Okay? Now, look at verse 2 again. Well, actually, let's read verses 1 and 2 again here in Romans 3. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way. Why? Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Okay? So, go to Deuteronomy now. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, we are going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 1 and verse 10. Now therefore hearken, O Israel. Who is Israel? Jacob. Who is Jacob? A descendant from who? Isaac. And in Isaac thy seed shall be called. And who is Isaac from? Abraham. And it is in Isaac his seed shall be called. Okay? Are you with me? So, Abram? Isaac and Jacob 
or what? Hebrews. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land, Jewry, which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal, Baal Peor. For all the men that follow Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. He is not a Jew that is one outwardly, but inwardly cleave unto who? The actual commandments? No, unto the Lord himself. Okay? Behold, I have taught you, behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of these nations, they call them goyim, okay, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation, Israel, is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day. Yes, the law is spiritual. Kept in what? Carnal ordinances. Okay? But the law of God is perfect, converting the soul. But see, man at his best cannot keep the law. It took God manifest in the flesh. You know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh to fulfill what man could never do. Okay? Verse 9. Verse 9. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. See, during the Old Testament, during the law, that circumcision made without hands wasn't there. Talked about that in several videos as well. Okay, that circumcision made without hands is Christ in you, the hope of glory. During the law, it was faith and works. There was no eternal security. The Holy Ghost can come and go, come and go, come and go. You were not sealed as you are on this in this dispensation today. So that's why you couldn't touch certain things or eat certain things because it would defile your soul. Why? Because the circumcision made without hands wasn't there. Do you get it? Okay, let's continue. That's why it says, keep thy soul diligently. You and I today in this dispensation, if you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, new creature in Christ Jesus, you don't have to keep your soul for anything. Why? Because it's not your salvation. You are saved by grace through faith. The one who is keeping your soul is Jesus Christ. God, our Father, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit that dwells in you. You don't have to keep your soul for anything, okay? Because why? It's His salvation. Your soul is His, okay? Okay? Uh, contrary to popular belief, God created all souls, yes, but not every soul belongs to Him as to a relationship. Do you understand? Don't believe these deluded people who want to preach to you ecumenicalism. Okay? Ecumenicalism is Catholicism, Jesuitism. Okay? So, so that's what that means about keeping thy soul diligently. Why? Because under the law, it was faith and works. You were not, you were not eternally secure. You could lose your salvation. Unlike today, when you are sealed unto the day of redemption. 
if you are truly of the church of the living God. Let's continue. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. The parents, father and mother, are to teach the children. About who? God. Okay? Verse 10. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. Yes, father and mother are to teach the children. Not Jesuits in the public or private school system. Okay? Now, go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. So, the statutes, the commandments, the oracles of God were committed unto who? Israel. Who is Israel? The 12 tribes of Jacob. Who is Jacob? From Isaac, in whose seed, uh, and Isaac your seed shall be called. Okay? Isaac. Who is Isaac? The promised son from Sarah and Abraham. And who is Abraham? Who was Abram, a Hebrew. And of whom did Abram, who became Abraham, a Hebrew, uh, from whom did he descend? Shem. Are you with me? Not Ham. Not Japheth. But Shem. Okay? And Abraham had many children. Yes, he did. But it is in Isaac, the line of the Hebrew. Meaning, not the line of the Chinese. Not the line of the Japanese. Not the line of the Mongols. Okay? Stuff like that. All right, you with me? Now, Deuteronomy chapter 6. Be beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land, Jewry, whither ye go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, oracles of God, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's sons, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Not one God of three persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. You and I are made in the similitude of God. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. Let's continue. Okay? And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. At the end of the day, it is an issue of the heart. It is. That cannot be denied. But is your heart broken, contrite, and fear the Lord? Or filled with devils? Hmm, I wonder. And these words which I command thee this day, the oracles of God, shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. You know, fellowship among brethren. Sooner or later, the scriptures are going to be mentioned one way or another. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is going to be mentioned one way or another. Okay? And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, 
That right there is a twisting where you see the, the Jews today. They put that black box on their head uh, and it, it looks like a unicorn kind of thing. They have uh, pieces of scripture in that little box. That's where they get that from. Okay. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. Uh, I used to work for a Jew before in a very rich area here in Illinois. Um, on the doorposts of his house, he had little pieces of wood inscribed with uh, pieces of uh, scripture written in Hebrew, of course, on his doorposts. Okay. All right, where was that? Okay. Verse 10. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, the promised seed, uh, and Isaac thy seed shall be called, okay? Isaac was the son of promise, okay? And to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things which thou fillest not. And wells dig, which thou diggest not. Vineyards and olive trees, which thou planted, plantest not. When thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware, Jeshurun. Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Great instruction in righteousness for us today. Because you and I as Gentiles... Whether of Ham or of Japheth. Okay? We, of Ham and Japheth, if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you are grafted into the tree of the Jew, the Hebrew, in Shem's tent. Okay? And Shem's tent, sig um, signifying what? The body of Christ, the church of the living God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay, because, okay, look at verse 11, about houses full of all good things, okay? You and I as Gentiles of Ham and Japheth, this stuff was established before unto who? The Hebrew, the Jew, okay? We are grafted in to make the Hebrew, the Jew, jealous, okay? All right, you with me? Okay? Let's continue. And then in verse 12, it talks about beware, lest thou forget the Lord. A lot of people who are replacement theology, who say they are of the church of the living God, but they're Christians, okay? How, how easy it is to forget sometimes what the Lord brought us out of. Especially being Gentiles grafted into their tree. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 13, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. He made you. He has every right. He wants your, he wants your love. He wants your devotion. He wants your attention. And when you give your attention to things of this world, uh, other gods, little g, something uh, from Satan, the little g god of this world. Uh, yeah, God made you for a relationship with himself. So yes, he has every right to be jealous. Okay, let's continue. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. And the Jews today in Israel in the nation has rejected their God, their Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, their King, okay? Jewry in a whole has rejected their Messiah. And the Jews today, the one on the one side of the Hasidic Jew, okay? They are not following strict scriptural Judaism, but they encompass the Talmud, the teaching of the rabbis, and Kabbalistic magic, okay? You read the book Night by Eli Wiesel. Talks all about it right before the Lord allowed his people to go into the Holocaust, okay? That is what the Jew is doing today in Israel. They are not true Jews 
in sense of what a Jew is according to Scripture. Why? Because they, intel, uh, they incorporate the Talmud and Kabbalistic magic. Okay? And beside, the law today in this dispensation, the law is coming back during the time of Jacob's trouble and in the kingdom of heaven. The law will return. Yes. But today, to be saved, you don't have to keep the law. You don't have to do the works of the law to be saved. And you don't have to do the works of the law to stay saved unto the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? Are you with me? Let's continue. And ye shall not tempt the Lord your God, as he tempted him in Massa. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, and his testimonies, and his statutes, which he hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and, thou shalt, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers." to cast out all thine enemies from before thee, as the Lord hath spoken. See, them staying in the land of Israel was conditional on their obedience and adherence to the law. Okay? Made for a nation. Okay? Let's continue. And ver verse 20. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you. Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us, out, brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord shewed signs and wonders, because the Jews require a sign. Okay? Scripturally, Jews are equated unto what? Hebrews. Okay, let's continue. And the Lord shewed signs and wonders, great and sore, upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God, for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day, and that and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. Okay, are you with me? So the oracles of God, were uh, the, the law, the covenants and stuff like that were given unto who? The Jews who scripturally are Hebrews. Okay? Now, go now to Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. This may very well be a two-part video, just so you know. Okay? Romans chapter 9. I'm so sick of this anti-Semitic hatred that I see. So sick of it. <laughs> Imagine how sick our Lord is of it. Romans chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 13. Uh, the book of Romans is written unto who? Us Gentiles. For what dispensation? The dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay, This is doctrine for us today within the Pauline epistles. Um, within the book of Romans, there are those out there, easy believism devils, who are hyper dispensational, will tell you that Romans 9 ver through 11 is doctrinally for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble, that these don't apply for us today. They're liars, they're devils. Please don't be so deluded in your brain to fall for them. Please. But, Romans chapter 9, verses 1 under verse 13. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ 
for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites. Israelites. What is Israel? Israel is Jacob. Hmm. Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption, God chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In Isaac shall thy seed be called. God chose the Hebrew, the Jew. Okay? He chose them. God chooses. We don't choose him. He chooses us. And that's not that's not Calvinism, okay? That's not Calvinism. Okay, I have a whole video uh, debunking Calvinism that the Lord gave me to do, okay? But it's God's choice. He chose Israel. He chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as he chose the way of the cross, okay? So let's continue. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises? So Israel is who? Jacob. Oh, don't worry. Don't you worry. We're going to be looking at that here coming up in a little bit, okay? Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever, amen. Uh, Jesus Christ, God our Father, came from the tribe of Judah. Judah is of the sons of Jacob. Who is Jacob? Israel. A Hebrew. A Jew. Okay, let's continue. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Now see, these replacement theology devils take this and twist this. Okay? Hence, the Canaanite, uh, the Hamite, um, black Hebrew Israelite. They'll say, remember, not everybody is Israel who is of Israel. Okay? Verse uh, 7. Neither because they are of the seed of Abraham. Are they all children? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Hold your place here. Go to Genesis chapter 32. What is Israel? Genesis chapter 32. Israel. First mention of Israel. Genesis chapter 32. Okay? Genesis chapter 32. Verses 24 on to verse 30. Genesis chapter 32, verses 24 on to verse 30. And Jacob, who is of who? Isaac. Do we have to go down that rundown again? Okay. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day, the precarnate Jesus Christ. Okay. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Jacob, supplanter, the one who took his brother by the heel. Okay, that's what Jacob means. And he said, pay attention. Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. What does Israel mean? For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and has and hast prevail. So Israel means what? A prince that has power with God and with men and has prevailed. Verse 29, And Jacob asked him I, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of that place Peniel. For 
I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Jacob wrestled with God, a precarnate form of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Amphipomorphic, or whatever they call it. I forget the Jesuitical term that they come up with that. But um, yeah, uh, Jacob wrestled with God. That was God he was wrestling with. Okay? God has a spirit, soul, and body. Remember, you and I are made in the similitude of God. Okay? Similar, meaning we have a spirit, soul, and body. God has a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? But Israel means a prince that has power with God and men and has prevailed. Now go back to Romans chapter 9. So when you see verse 6, not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, a prince who has power with God and men, who, uh, uh, wait, 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 I just lost my place. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. See, you and I, as the church of the living God, because we are grafted into the tree of the Jew, the Hebrew, we have share in their promises and covenants by grace through faith. Okay? By grace through faith. We were added onto them. They are not added onto us. We were added onto them. Hence, we have their promises. We have access to their root, their vine, our Lord Jesus Christ, by grace, through faith, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? So when it says, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel, princes who have power with God and men. Okay? Don't let these people saying that uh, the black Hebrew Israelites or the British Israelites. See, Satan is confusing what Israel is. Israel means a prince with God and man and has prevailed. Okay? We have power with God. Not that we command God, no, but that we can go to him through our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. We have power with God because God dwells within us. That circumcision made without hands. Do you get it? Why is that? Verse seven. Neither because they are of the neither because they are the seed of Abraham, the actual physical seed of Abraham, the actual physical descendant of the Hebrew. Okay, are they all children? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Isaac is the promised son to Baron, Sarah, and Abraham. See, in Hagar, they took it upon themselves to establish one of God's promises. Ah, uh -huh. didn't work. Okay? God promised Isaac. God promised the Mashiach unto Israel. But Israel rejected that. So it came unto us to make them jealous. Do you understand? This is very simple. But see, the devil is blurring what this is. It's very simple. Let's continue. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Just you being a Hebrew, a Jew, doesn't today automatically mean you're saved. Okay? Why? Because our Lord chose the way of the cross. Okay? You being a Jew, a Hebrew, doesn't guarantee you salvation. You have to come to the cross broken of your self-righteousness and have godly sorrow because it's your fault that he died on that cross. And in fear of the Lord, you call upon the name of the Lord and he may save you. And when he save you, he dwells within you and gives you a circumcision made without hands and he makes you a new creature in Christ Jesus. Okay? Okay? So, this means you me, you being a direct descendant of Abraham or of Jacob, of the 12 tribes, today does not guarantee you anything. Do you understand? Do you understand? 
Okay? So, let's continue. Verse 9. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. For the children being not yet born, neither had neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. God chose Isaac as God chose the way of the cross. God chose the Hebrew because they were the littlest. He's a God of the little guy. God chose the way of the cross. And to go to the way of the cross is brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord. Okay? Not your own mental belief being a thief climbing up some other way. Okay? It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Why did God hate Esau? He hated Esau. Not his sin. He hated Esau. Why? Because Esau's God was his belly. He sold his birthright away for a pot of soup. So he chose flesh, the things of the world, over his God-given birthright. He gave it to Jacob. See? You see? Now, Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, verses 7 on to verse 29. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Now see, the election is talking about those who go the way of the cross, what God has chosen. God has chosen the weak and foolish things of this world, meaning the cross. Read Isaiah chapter 53 sometime, okay? The Jew, that's, that's our God on the cross, naked, broken. His visage is so marred that beyond any other man pulled his beard out, uh, flesh gangrenous and all that kind of stuff. That's our God. But see, that's what God chose. That is what God chose. God shall provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. God chose the way of the cross. So when it says elect here, it's not that Calvinistic, you're elect whether you want to be so or not, or you're non-elect whether you want to be so or not. It's not that. The election there is talking about the way of the cross. Okay? The church of the living God. Let's continue. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid! God forbid! But rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles. Why? For to provoke them to jealousy. Gentiles. Someone who is not a Hebrew, a Jew. Okay? Someone who is of Ham, of Japheth, and those even of Shem. Because remember, it is in Isaac thy seed shall be called. Okay? God chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That specific line, the Hebrew line from whence Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, Cain. Okay? So those of Shem, such as the Orientals, the Chinese, the Japanese, stuff like that. Okay? They are of Shem. Okay? But they are not of the chosen of the Hebrew. Do you understand? Okay? You, you get that? You get that? 
a Gentile is someone of not of God's initial choosing. Do you understand? Okay? Someone who is not a Jew, someone who is not a Hebrew is a Gentile. Even if they are, like I said, the Asiatics, even if they are of Shem, because God chose who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Do you understand? Okay? Let's continue this. Now, us Gentiles, those who are not Hebrews, those who are not Jews, okay? Shem of, of Ham and Japheth, and yes, those even of Shem, okay? We have been grafted into their tree. Why? To make the Hebrew, the Jew, jealous. What do you think? Are they jealous of you? You black Hebrew Israelites? What about um, those Hasidim who incorporate the Talmud and the uh, Kabbalah? What about you British Israelites and you Americans who think that you've replaced? Give me a break. Let's continue this. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them be the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak unto you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Remember, Paul was the apostle unto the Gentiles, while Peter was the apostle unto who? The circumcision. Who was circumcised given unto? Abraham. And those uh, there are those of you, well, uh, yeah, but Ishmael, he was circumcised. Yes, he was, but Ishmael was not the son of promise, like Isaac was, okay? It is in Isaac thy seed shall be called, okay? Okay? So, Peter being the, uh, the apostle of the circumcision, the Hebrews, those that come from the direct line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Let's continue. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Midway during the time of Jacob's trouble, I believe, is when the Jew, the Hebrew, is going to realize, oh boy, we done messed up. Uh, those authorized versions of the scriptures believers, the Church of the Living God, they were the ones telling us the truth all along. And they are going to have a zeal and a fervor for the Lord that's going to be unrivaled. Imagine if the Jew today, like the Hasidim and those in Israel, had that kind of fervor, that kind of um, zeal for the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. What a different world this would have been. Verse 16. For if the first fruit be holy... The lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, talking about us Gentiles, being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them. See, the natural branch that's being referred to, the first lump, okay, is God and his choosing of the Hebrew Israel. And we, the Gentile, are the one wild olive tree Grafted in. Okay, do you understand? And if some of the branches be broken off because of unbelief, and thou being a wild olive tree, us Gentiles, okay, were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. And here's again, here's a rebuke to all you replacement theology devils. You Catholics, you new IFB guys, okay, you British Israelites, you black Hebrew Israelites, here's your rebuke. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Okay? Thou wilt say then, the branches, the Jews, were broken off that I might be grafted in. He's addressing replacement theology right here, people. 
Verse 20, well, because of unbelief they were broken off. And thou standest by faith, by grace through faith. Do you see grace through faith here? Not your stupid, satanic, Jesuit, easy believism. Okay? It's God's grace that us Gentiles, who are not Hebrews, Jews, okay? It is God's grace that he has grafted us into the tree of the Hebrew, the Jew. Okay? By grace through faith. Do you get it? Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Someone who is truly, genuinely saved of the church of the living God will not hate the Jew. They won't. You might be ignorant. You might not know the significance of it. But someone who is truly saved, born again, of the church of the living God, a new creature in Christ Jesus, converted, will not hate the Jew. Will not try to replace the Jew. Yeah, there are a lot of wicked, evil, stupid Jews out there who are Hebrews, of course. Yes. Yes. But, nonetheless, the land of Israel is their land promised to them by, <laughs> by the most powerful promise you can get. Okay? We of the Church of the Living God we support Israel's right to that land. I don't support modern Israel, what they do. But they are the direct physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Unto them were committed the oracles of God. And we are grafted into their tree. And we, Gentiles, who are not Hebrews or Jews, are grafted in to make them jealous. Do you understand? Okay? Paul is rebuking those of you replacement theology devils out there who say you are Jews and are not. Let's continue. For if God spared not the natural branches, the Hebrews, the Jews, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Yes, a Hebrew can be saved today by grace through faith, because it's not a requirement to keep the law to be saved or stay saved. Why? Because this is the time of the Gentiles. Us Gentiles have been grafted into their tree. Why? To make them jealous. Okay? And if you've ever met a truly saved, born-again, converted Jew, Hebrew, of the church of the living God, a new creature, wow, that, that fervor, vehement zeal and jealousy for their God, wow, a truly saved Jew, truly saved you, who is a Hebrew. <laughs> wow. Wow. Let's continue. Verse 24. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, talking about us, and wert grafted contrary to nature, were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, the Hebrews, the Jews, be grafted into their own olive tree. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. What is this mystery? Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And all Israel is making reference during the time of Jacob's trouble, when that Israel, prince with God and uh, of man, okay, when that Israel realizes the truth, they will be saved. 
okay? Not sealed because eternal security is not in the time of Jacob's trouble because you take the mark of the beast in your right hand or in your forehead, you're going to hell with your ticket punched, so to speak. No ifs, ands, or buts. But eventually, all Israel that remains and who truly believes, who comes to the Lord, will be saved. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, now this election is talking about how God chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How he chose the Hebrew. Okay? A different election. Well, how do you know that? Hello? As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. Talking to Gentiles. But as touching the election, the apple of God's eye, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. God is not done with the Jew. Okay? He is not. He is not. We, the Gentile, have been grafted in to make them jealous. Okay? Now, go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Made a reference of this. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 15 on to verse 21. Fifteen under verse twenty-one in Deuteronomy chapter thirty-two. But Jeshurun, which means highly favored, waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat; thou art grown thick; thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and lightly esteemed the capital R rock of his salvation. Hebrew, Israel, Jewry. Because they were highly favored and blessed. Read the book of Judges, people. Okay? <laughs> because of their highly blessed favor that they got from the Lord because he chose them as the littlest. The prophecy here, the warning that they would wax fat, that they would uh, lightly esteem the rock of their salvation, take it for granted. Okay? That has happened unto Israel today. But see, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's why he brings them, brought them back to their land in unbelief, in, um, which correlates on to Ezekiel chapter 36. Okay? Let's continue. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not, their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? Of that capital R, rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them, because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters, and he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation, children in, in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy which that with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. Gentile. Those who are not of the Jew, Hebrew. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Oh, like Shem, those who are not of the direct line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Because remember, Shem is the Asiatics, but it is the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that was chosen. Because there again, the, um, the, the union of uh, Abraham and Hagar. Similar, and you can compare it to um, Timothy, okay? 
Um, that was a union between Ham and Shem. But see, it's an Isaac who uh, his seed is called. Like Timothy, okay? Shem, Hebrew, okay? With Japheth, okay? Okay? Do you get this so far? Now go to Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Psalm 18, verses 40 on to verse 50. Thou hast given me the necks of mine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me the head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. You could call this a prophecy of the current time, of that foolish nation. You know, the fool has said in his heart there is no God. How we Gentiles have been grafted into their tree. Okay? As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. The strangers shall fade away. Time of the Gentiles will end. Then he's going to turn his attention back to the Jew, the Hebrew, okay? And be afraid out of their close places. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God that avengeth me, and subdueth the people under me. He delivereth me from mine enemies, yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Great deliverance giveth he to his king. Who is his king? And sheweth mercy to his anointed, to David, and to his seed forevermore. David. Son of David, meaning kinship, our Lord Jesus Christ, son of David, king of the Jews. King of the Jews, the Hebrews. Scripturally, a Jew is a Hebrew. Okay? Unto them were committed the oracles of God. Okay? Unto them, the laws, the covenants, the promises, and that kind of stuff were committed unto who? The Hebrew. Okay? Son of David, our Lord Jesus Christ, ruling as king. Okay? And to his seed. He came unto his own, the Jew, and his own received him not. Okay? Are you with me? Okay? Now go to Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. Oh boy. Amos chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore will I punish you for all your iniquities. See right there, verse 2 also shows us what? That he chose what family? The descendants of Abraham. Okay? Like I told you, Genesis chapter 10 are the descendants of Shem. But God chose Abram. Who became, uh, who is scripturally first mentioned as a Hebrew, who became Abraham. Abraham, who got, begat Isaac, and whose seed you shall be, he shall be called. And Isaac begat Esau and Jacob. God hated Esau, but he loved Jacob. Okay? Do you see? So, verse 2 there, or verse 1 there, excuse me, verses 1 and 2, of course, excuse me for that. Um, there are those of Shem who are not Hebrews. See, like I said, read Genesis chapter 10 on the genealogy of Shem, okay? 
not all of those were descended, or not all of those of the genealogy of Shem were of the chosen line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See? Okay? Do you understand? Let's continue. Can two walk together except they be agreed? <laughs> Will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he hath taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it? Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Let's read verse 8. The lion hath roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Remember, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes back at his second coming, he's going to be the lion of the tribe of Judah. Okay? Okay? Go to Ephesians chapter 3. Go to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Now we read in Romans chapter 11, verses 7 on to verse 9, we looked at what Israel actually means. Okay? Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 10. What happened? You have to study to shew thyself approved unto God, to be a workman who needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. It's called being dispensational. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Let's read. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 and verse 10. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, those who are not of the Hebrews, uh, encompassing some of those of Shem, Ham and Japheth, okay? For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to given me to your word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore, afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. What is that mystery? Which in other ages, in other ages, other dispensations, was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. What is the mystery? That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, grafted into their tree, and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. That's the mystery. That us Gentiles grafted into the tree of the Jew, the Hebrew. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the chosen line. Okay? Not of Ham, not of Japheth, and not all of Shem. Even though it is Shem's tent. Because from Shem came the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Do you, do you get it? Okay, let's continue. All right. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Jew and Gentile, one body, not the one before, before Paul or after Paul, which these hyper-dispensationalists teach, that there are two bodies, one of the Jew and one of the Gentile. No, one body comprised of Jew and Gentile, okay? Nonsense that these devils preach. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, 
which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So people like to say uh, that in Genesis they were looking forward to the cross. But no, they were not. Why? Because it wasn't revealed until Paul. Okay? This was hidden in other ages, other dispensations. See? But the mystery is us Gentiles grafted into their tree. That's the mystery. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Let's read the verse 12. According to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. And as I had mentioned, go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Let's see the verse. Verse 15. Uh, let's see. Verse 15 on to verse 16. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. See, you don't keep the law today. Why? Because the dispensation changed. We, the Gentile, are grafted into the tree of the Jew. Okay? Okay? You don't have to keep the law to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. I beg your pardon. You don't have to keep the law to be saved or stay saved. Okay? Christ fulfilled the law. He was that offering for sin. God will provide himself a lamb for burnt offering. Okay? Genesis chapter 22, verse 8, that is. Look that up. Okay? All right? But go now to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Verses 11 on to verse 22. The New Testament begins when? Hebrews chapter 9, verses 9, uh, verses 11 on to verse 22. But Christ being come an high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats, and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once, Catholic, into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament. That by means of death. For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. They which are called might receive the promise, the promise of eternal inheritance. What does that mean? The redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, the old testament. What does that mean? Because of Adam, all have sinned. We're all born sinners, yes. But see, it's your own personal sins that you need to take account of and be broken of your self-righteousness because it's your own personal sins that put Christ on the cross, okay? But under the old testament, they had to continually offer animal sacrifices because the blood of bulls and goats covered where the blood of Christ, the blood of God, cleanseth away all sin. One covered, one cleanses. Okay? Do you get it? All right? So the, um, uh, the transgressions of the first covenant, okay, those animal sacrifices could never take away sin. Cover them, yes, but the blood of God shed on the cross. Okay? That 
takes away sin. And of course, he shed his blood on the cross and died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? Then he went up into heaven. But see, the blood of God cleanses away sin, while the blood of bulls and goats only covered it. See? Verse 16. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Christ, by his death, brought in the New Testament. Moses, he died before the going into the promised land. A type of Christ. He had to die. He could not go over to the promised land. Christ died, brought in the New Testament. This dispensation that we are in today, with his death, burial, and resurrection, brought in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Okay? Do you get it? Let's continue. For a testament is, for, is a force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For, where Mo, for when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats and water and scarlet wool, scarlet wool and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. And you read verse uh, Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. Okay? Clears it up. So, the blood of bulls and goats covered. The blood of Jesus Christ washed away. Okay? The blood of Jesus Christ washed that away. Go to Galatians chapter 3. Go to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Verses 19 on to verse 29. Okay? Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed, singular, should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by an angel in the hand of a mediator. Now, he's talking about Christ. And in thy seed shall, uh, and Isaac, and in thy seed shall he be called. Okay? That seed, singular, talking about Jesus Christ, the son of David, king of the Jews. Okay? Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one, spirit, soul, and body. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have come, should have been by the law. The law contained in the Old Testament. The law of Moses. The Levitical law. Okay? That law was added because of what? Because of transgression. To show you and me that we could never keep the law in our best state. That man at his best state is altogether vanity. The law was there to show us to kill us, to kill our self-righteousness, to show us that we couldn't be perfect with God, no matter how hard we try. Even today, we can't be perfect with God. Why? Because sin is in the flesh, the skin suit. Okay? Okay, you with me? Let's continue. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterward be revealed. And it was revealed unto Paul, okay, for this current dispensation. This dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, which began with the death, burial, and resurrection. The death, okay, brought in this dispensation. A new dispensation is brought in by what? Devastation and death. Okay? Let's continue. And see, afterwards be revealed. Don't for one second believe anyone that's telling you that they were looking forward to the cross all the way in the book of Genesis. That's a lie. That's Catholic. 
Verse 24, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. The law was added because of transgressions, to show you that you cannot keep the law. The law, the Ten Commandments, is God's perfect requirements. You and I can't keep that, no matter how hard we try. And that was given to us to show us that we cannot keep what God has said. It took God manifest in the flesh. It took Jesus Christ is come in the flesh to fulfill the law, his own law. It took him to do that. God, because we cannot keep God's perfect commandments. That's what that means. That's what the law was there for. To show you you can do it. And see... Why does someone want to bring you under the law today? To deceive you, to get you away from grace, and also to build you up in the wrong way, to fill you with pride. Well, I've been confirmed. I've been baptized. I had the Eucharist, you know, the little round way for God cookie of the Catholic. I drank the wine. Or I'm staying kosher. I'm not mingling with Gentiles. Okay? I'm not wearing diverse kinds of clothing. Okay? I'm letting the sides of my hair grow long. It's not a requirement for us today. Let's continue. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Identified. Baptism is a public profession of an inner conversion. Baptism does not save you. Okay? It's the blood that washes away your sins. Not water, Catholic. Charismatic. Okay? Acts 2.38 is not the gospel. Water baptism is not necessary for your salvation. Neither is keeping of the law. Okay? So being put on Christ, baptized... In context there is what? Being identified through baptism. Publicly identifying yourself. Baptism is a public profession of an inner conversion. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. There's no Jew. There's no Greek. Male or female? So what? Are we sexless creatures? No. That's talking salvifically, pertaining to your salvation. Culturally. Okay? Culturally. Yes, there are cultural Jews. Yes. There are obviously male and females. Okay? There are cultural Greeks. This is talking about salvation, not culture. Okay? There's a difference. Verse 29. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And as we already looked at, okay, that is not just talking about the physical seed of Abraham. But uh, in uh, Abraham, Abraham was promised what? That the Lord Jesus Christ would come of his, uh, of his reign, of his loins, of, of his people. In Isaac thy seed shall be called. The typology is all there. Okay? Remember, you being an actual descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob doesn't guarantee you salvation. God has chosen the way of the cross. Okay? And you have to go there broken, contrite, and in the fear of the Lord. And in the fear of the Lord, you're going to call upon the name of the Lord. Okay? You understand? This is not that difficult. Now, now, let's go to the very first mention of the word Jew. You've been waiting for this. We had to go through that. We had to go through that, okay? Now, we are going to be going through the very first mention of the word Jew in the scriptures. And with that, because I do not know how long this is going to take, I'm going to call it quits for this video. This is actually going to be a two-part video. 
okay? Because we're going to take our time and go through this, okay? Yes, this is going to be a two-part video. So I'm going to stop this, take a quick chill, and then I'm going to do part two of this video, okay? You with me? Okay. So, this was part one. What is a Jew? Part two, what is a Jew? Coming up very soon. We're going to be going through the first mention, all right? So, see you in the next video.